the right wedding garment. Hallelujah. Amen. He had the perfect wedding garment. It fits him good. Amen. And it was a little too long for him because he's a little too short. And uh, so we had to take that and he, he took it to somebody and they fixed it. And made it the right length. But it's tailored for him now. Yeah. Hallelujah. If Brother David West was to try to put it on, he'd be up a creek. <laughs> and he'd have knee highs. Hallelujah. He'd be walking around with some of them britches up. You know, just go down past your knees a little bit. Hallelujah. But it's because it ain't tailored for him. Hallelujah. God has got a specific wedding garment just for you. Hallelujah. It, it may not work just like the wedding garment works for uh, Brother Conti. It, it, it may not work like Brother Wiley's wedding garment. Hallelujah. Amen. I, I, you know, I, I'm a different character. I'm a different uh, size. And I, I know I wouldn't, you know, if Brother Conti was to put on my pants, he'd probably have to have more than suspenders to hold them up. Hallelujah. Amen. Because I'm a pretty good sized fella in the middle. Amen. Uh, I'm on the level. You can tell I got my bubble in the middle. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, my. <laughs> But you know what? It doesn't make any difference what size I am compared to what size he is. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, God's got a wedding garment that's made just for you. Hallelujah. I want you to understand this morning that God, amen, is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. And he's invited us to his wedding. And we come in to his house with our filthy rags on. And he said, let me take off those robes huh, that you've got on. Let me take off those filthy rags. Huh. Here, I've got a wedding garment that'll fit you perfect. Hallelujah. I've got a wedding garment that's made just for you. And when you put it on, oh, it's going to make all the difference in the world. You're not going to look like you used to look. You're not going to act like you used to act. Hallelujah. All right. Now, I've never done this experiment. I know folks said. I don't know, I'm Brother Bourne, Brother J.J. Bourne that preached for us last November, amen, was telling me back when he was pastoring in Houston that uh, there was a homeless guy started living under the steps. They had a two-story building and there was a fire escape steps that came down. And uh, one day he came to the church and he noticed there was a homeless guy that had moved in underneath those steps. So we went back and talked to him a little bit, just kind of visited with him. And uh, every day, amen, he got to notice and that guy was there. So finally he realized the guy was just living there now. And so he didn't chase him off. In fact, in fact he went to him and he, he helped him. He, he would bring food to him and stuff. But he would give him more than just food physically. He would also give him spiritual food. Hallelujah. Now, this guy's living under his steps. He's not telling him where he's been in the world, but don't tell him what he's done. It doesn't really matter to God. Hallelujah. How dirty your garment is. It, it, it makes no difference to God where you've been and what you've done. Hallelujah. And so Brother Bourne kept witnessing to him and kept talking to him. And, and he, he told him, he said, man, I want you just to come inside and, and, and experience what's happening in here. Hallelujah. And, and so one, one Sunday morning, the, uh, the old boy came into the church with Brother Bourne, and uh, uh, he sat down on the, on the back seat, and uh, uh, as the course of the service began to go, amen, the Holy Ghost began to move, and, and that poor little homeless guy got the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Oh, uh, let me tell you what happened next, and that is that he was totally changed. Hallelujah. We're talking about a guy that didn't have anything. He's living on the street. Amen. Within just a few weeks now, he's got a job. He's got an apartment. Amen. He, he's got a decent set of clothes on. He doesn't wear the old filthy rags anymore. You know what? It, that we're talking about the physical. But I'm telling you, amen, that in the spiritual realm, God did a work on his clothes first in the spirit realm. Hallelujah. He took off some old rags of unrighteousness. He took off some old rags of unholiness. He took off some old rags of, of, of I don't care. He took off some old rags of the world is down on me. He took off some old rags, amen, and he gave him a 
of joy. And he gave him a peace. Hallelujah. And he opened his understanding that there is a way. Hallelujah. Out of your situation. I need to tell somebody here this morning that God is the way out of your situation. Hallelujah. He wants to take off all those old clothes and put on the new ones. But there was a problem. <clears throat> and uh, this problem came up in that they got close to the wedding ceremony and uh, they have a wedding feast laid out and everybody's there and everybody's eating and all of a sudden the king walks in and he looks at the crowd. Now this was not the, the crowd he had invited. You gotta understand, they didn't come. In fact, some of them were dead. He didn't kill them. Burned their city. He totally annihilated them. But the people that are invited, you know, there's, that guy used to be down there at the truck stop. I used to see him peddling stuff down there trying to make an extra buck. There's an old alcoholic. <laughs> There's that guy over there. He used to be a drug head. But now, you know, here they are sitting in my wedding. And they're all clothed in wedding garments. They don't even look like the same people. Let me tell you something. You know, we, we talk about the outside holiness. You know why we talk about that? Because when the Holy Ghost comes on the inside and sanctifies the inside, it will sanctify the outside. Amen. We don't have to do it. The Holy Ghost does it. Hallelujah. It changes you. It makes a new creature out of you. You don't act the same way. You don't smell the same way. Hallelujah. Where you smell like uh, booze and cigars, now you smell like perfume. Hallelujah. <laughs> Not saying you gotta use perfume, is it? Don't stink. Now all of a sudden, you're a new creature. Hallelujah. Now all of a sudden, all things have been made new. Amen. All those old filthy, nasty rags that were so smelly and dirty. All of a sudden, they're no longer there. Now, you're a new creature. Hallelujah. So when the king walks in, he's, he's coming to the table to, to join the wedding party. And he looks around, and, and there's all of those that have been uh, uh, changed and rearranged. And now they're clothed in different clothing. They're clothed in, in wedding garments. And all of a sudden, something at the end of the table catches his attention, and he looks and there sits old Mo. <laughs> now Mo hadn't changed nothing. I'm going to get in this wedding. I'm going to get some free food, but I ain't changing squat. Mm -hmm. If they don't like me the way I am, they just have to accept me like I am or else. I'm sorry. God does not accept you like you are. He changes you. He rearranges you. He makes a new creature out of you. Hallelujah. Amen. If you come to the house of God and you stay the same and you never change and the Holy Ghost never comes in and never changes you and makes a new creature out of you, guess what? It won't be many years before you'll be back in old habits. You'll be back doing the same thing you used to do. Yeah. Hello. Right. Hallelujah. But God is calling you this morning. I want to change your clothes. Hallelujah. Oh, I've got some good clothes for you to wear. Look at, listen to this. Isaiah 61 10 said, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord, my soul shall be joyful in my God. For he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. Hallelujah. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness. Oh, hallelujah. It's God that wants to do it. Amen. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords has invited you to a marriage supper. The Bible calls it the marriage. you 
to the wedding and he offers you a wedding garment. Now whether you change into the wedding garment or whether you don't is up to you. But the Bible said that when that king saw that guy or girl or whatever it was that was invited to the wedding sitting there without the wedding garment on. Now let me tell you something. The king got pretty upset. Now why did he get upset? Because this is his son's wedding. It's a big deal. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to the marriage supper of who? The Lamb. Who is the Lamb? The Son of God, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. So we're going to the Son's wedding. Did you catch that story? Jesus was telling a story about himself. And so the reason he got upset was because he provided the proper clothing. He provided the proper attire for that person, that individual, to change into. Hallelujah. He provided a place for him to get rid of the old stuff that he had had on for so long and to clothe himself with that robe of righteousness that I just talked about. Those clothes of salvation, he provided those. But guess what? This guy. Well, you know, this really ain't that important of a deal to me. Not my wedding. It's not my wedding. So what I care? No we. Mm. So, what would happen in this scenario, okay? If next month we're having this big wedding, and Candace is there and she's all dressed up in her fine little stuff, and uh, Brother Condi comes out and he's all dressed up in his fine stuff. And all of us guys have got our little neat suits on. And they start playing the music and the lights dim. And here comes the first bridesmaid down the aisle. And she's got her pretty little red dress on. I'll give you a preview. <clears throat> and, and she's carrying her little white flowers. And she walks down the aisle and everything is pretty. The second bridesmaid comes down the aisle. She's so pretty. You know, all of a sudden, comes that third bridesmaid now. <clears throat> she got on blue jean skirt. You know, nothing wrong with blue jean skirts in the right spot. Amen. Hallelujah. She got on her blue jean skirt. She got on her flip flops and her sunglasses. And she's going to be bopping down the aisle. What's going to happen? Everybody in the woods will go, what in the world? Did she not get fit for a dress? Well, yeah, they, they, they got her measurements. And the material was bought and the, the dress was made. But well, well, why, why doesn't she wear the dress? Why don't you have on the dress for her? I just don't like red. It's just not my color. Might be just not your wedding either. But you gotta understand, you've been invited to the big wedding. Hallelujah. Amen. You've been invited to this little wedding, but you've also been invited to the main wedding. Hallelujah. Oh, the marriage supper of the Lamb is gonna take place here before too long. And, and, and he won't change. And so he didn't have the wedding garment on, so what happens is uh, they, he calls his servants. The Bible said they come in and they took this guy and they bound him hand and foot. Somebody inked out the duct tape at the end of it. They wrapped his arms up, they wrapped his legs up, they put pieces of it over his mouth, 
And the Bible said they carried him away and they cast him into outer darkness. Now, I don't know if you know much about the Word of God or not, but outer darkness doesn't mean they just cast him outside in the dark. Outer darkness means they cast him into a place where he would never, ever again exist on this earth. He, would, he was cast into hell, literally. Amen. God put that little scenario together in this wedding event to let us understand, amen, how important it is that you line up with the Word of God and get the wedding garment on. Hallelujah. God wants to, uh, you to understand this morning how critical it is, amen, for you and I to be dressed in the robes of righteousness that he's provided. It's not our righteousness because our righteousness is the filthy rags we left behind. Hallelujah. No, no, no. It's his righteousness that he clothes us with. Oh, it's that meek and mild spirit. It's that spirit that says, you know what? It doesn't matter how it goes. I'm going to serve God anyway. Hallelujah. I don't care how You see, what happens is we get comfortable in our old filthy rags. Hello, don't tell me you don't. You know what the first thing I do when I get home after church is? Get out of these hot things and put me something I'm comfortable with. Amen. It's just my family at the house. I just go grab my PJs and put my PJs on. Amen. And I, I hang out around the house in my PJs because it's my home and I'm comfortable. Then I'm, I'm comfortable with that. But you know what? I can't do that with my spiritual man. I, I can't afford to step back into that comfort zone that I was used to. Because what that does is that it condemns me to be cast into hell fire. So what I have to do is when I put on the robe of righteousness, hallelujah, amen, I have to look forward to the wedding. I'm just at the wedding feast, but I have to understand there's a wedding fixing to be had. Oh, I don't want my lamp to run out of oil. Amen. So I, I'm going to go and I'm going to replenish some things, Brother Condi. I, I'm going to keep my oil level up in the spirit. Hallelujah. You know what oil represents in the Bible? It represents the spirit of God. It represents the Holy Ghost. And so I'm going to keep that oil level up. Hallelujah. Because I understand there's a day before long when the cry is going to go forth. Here comes the bridegroom. Oh, he's coming back to get a church that has made themselves ready. He's coming back to get a people. Amen. That have on a garment. Yeah. Amen. Oh, amen. Good job. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, of that garment, he said he's coming back for a bride who has on a garment without a spot, a wrinkle, or a blemish on it. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Now, <coughs> you actually find that scripture right in the middle of all those scriptures that talk about a husband loving his wife as Christ loved the church. And then all of a sudden he goes into this discourse about how he gave himself for her the church and how, you know, the husband's supposed to give himself for his wife and all this good stuff. And then it goes down and it brings up this little point about the wedding garment. It's got to have a clean wedding garment. Now, this is a clean shirt. I just got it out of the cleaners the other day. And uh, my wife will tell you I'm, I'm rough on shirts and ties. <laughs> I can't eat. But I get something on me. I'm, I'm usually... Usually every, clothes, every shirt I got's got a spot somewhere on it. And you may not can see it from there. You may not can even see it when you're standing top.